to week five, everybody. How are you all? I have missed you. I have really enjoyed reading your emails and seeing your artwork and I've popped them in the gallery below so you can have a peek later and share them with your family and friends. This week I'm introducing you to a Jewish Canadian artist and her name is Sandra Silbertswig. She suffers from a form of synthesia which means that she has a sensory overload and that sensory overload means that the colours that go into her brain are bigger and brighter than the colours that go into most of our brains. Instead of saying this is a disability or something weird, she sees this as her own personal superpower and uses it when she creates beautiful artwork. Behind me, I created two portraits using her style, using her colours and using her techniques. She focuses on the colour wheel. Now you will be creating your own portrait and I will show you in a minute how to do that. But let's look at the color wheel for a minute. This is the color wheel that you're familiar with. And this one is the smaller version of the one we have in the classroom. Primary colors being yellow, blue, and red. Secondary colors, of course, being orange, green, and purple. But there is another color wheel. And this one's really exciting. This is where your primary colors and your secondary colors combine to form tertiary colors. If you use these colours together in a piece of work, they're called analogous colours. Can you say that word? Analogous colours. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Analogous colours. And that means that you are choosing colours, two or three, that are next to each other on the tertiary wheel in your artwork. We do this to create an interesting effect. You can see this area down here, the colour gradation, and up here. This will form the basis of your work before you put your details on. Now there are a couple of ways we can do this. The first is using colour pencil. Sandra Silbertswig uses lots of bright colours and very bold forms. You can see here quite clearly the oval shapes for the eyes, very linear nose, a flattened nose. She uses curves to complement the eyes. She breaks down the face into smaller rectangles. You can see here the lips and she's also added a bit of the cheek and there's the neck. She has then outlined that and then colored in to the picture before she's added the designs on top. So this is what we're going to do today. I've started, I've actually drawn a pencil picture already. I don't think you can see that. So I'm gonna go over with my black marker. So first of all, we're going to add the nose. The nose is very flat and rectangular. We're still looking at similar proportions to a real face. Although the eyes are a little bit higher up in the forehead. Usually the eyes are halfway on, uh, down the face. She explores the notion of colour. And she's fascinated by colour. As you can see here, I have a tertiary color color wheel, which means that not only the primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, and the secondary colors, green, purple, and orange, but the tertiary colors, which are the colors in between. And I'm going to show you how she uses those together to create an interesting, design. Once that's done you can go in and you can erase. Sandra uses analogous colors and that means that she picks colors that are very close to each other on the tertiary color wheel. So this way she's going to create a color gradation which means that she's going using darker colors to lighter colors, but they're the same hue. The hue is the color. She could use any of these, but I will show you in the larger areas how she creates this gradation effect.
second is using pastel and watercolour. Remember to use the pastel first and the watercolour last because the pastel resists the watercolour. I hope you enjoy creating your portrait this week. I've used Posca markers and I've used acrylic pens to form the detail on top, but you could use markers or anything you have around the house. Acrylic pens work really well because they stand out, particularly the white and black, but you can choose to use whatever colors you have available. But if you want to go out and purchase, you could go to the art supply store and ask the person for acrylic pens or Posca markers. And you all know about Posca markers. Please keep this in mind for the project for next week. I will pull week six out a bit earlier I'll put it up on Thursday because you're going to create masks for Purin using Sandra's style. And because she has this beautiful body of work that is Jewish symbology, I will include that as well so that you can use those icons on your mask to help celebrate Purin on Tuesday. Keep sending your work in. Missing you so much. And have a great hour.